Notebooking is a fantastic way to record what your students are learning in science. This technique has been around for hundreds of years. Men and women like da Vinci, Beatrix Potter, and Thomas Edison have all taken advantage of notebooking. In this episode, I am going to share with you three reasons why I love to use notebooking for science. I'm Paige Hudson, author of the programs of Elemental Science. You are listening to the Tips for Homeschool Science show, where we are breaking down the lofty concepts of science into building blocks you can use in your homeschool. I had no idea what notebooking was before we started homeschooling. In fact, I was one of those crazy people who actually liked worksheets in school. Maybe it was the fact that my mom was a teacher, or maybe it was that I clearly knew what was required of my response. And I still appreciate worksheets, as they have their place. But as a homeschool mom, I have fallen in love with notebooking. Before I share with you all the three reasons I love notebooking for science, let's chat a little bit about what notebooking actually is. In notebooking, the students are not merely regurgitating facts. They are thinking over what they have read or heard and responding with what they have found to be meaningful. I have found notebooking to be an extremely effective tool that over time teaches students how to process and release information. At its core, notebooking has two key components the material content, and the visual content. Both are equally as important since they engage different parts of the students' brains. The material component of notebooking contains the information that the students have learned, basically what they have found to be meaningful or any key facts you want the student to remember. As we discussed in the previous two episodes, you always want to discuss a topic with your student before you have them write down a word as this will help them to formulate what they want to write down on their notebooking page. The visual component of notebooking displays a picture of the concepts that the students have studied. You can print out an actual picture, make a copy of a black line sketch, or draw your own version. The key is to have the students use an illustration that relates to the information they have written down, so that the picture acts as a visible representation of the information the students have learned. You can combine these two components on a blank sheet of paper, a pre-designed notebook page, a lap book, a booklet, or posters. You can gather the information from encyclopedias, living books, reference works, newspaper articles, magazines, and even textbooks. So as you can see, the possibilities are nearly endless. However you choose to use notebooking methods in your homeschool, the material and visual components will help to solidify the information into the students' minds. All right, now that we have a basic understanding of the components of notebooking, let's look at the three reasons why I love to use notebooking for science. First off, notebooking requires the students to think about what they have learned. There are no canned responses in notebooking. There are no blanks to fill in. There are no answers to match up. Instead, the students need to mull over what they just read to formulate a summary of what they've learned. In short, notebooking requires that the students engage with the material before they ever write down a word. Secondly, notebooking provides freedom for the students. Students are more likely to remember what they find meaningful. If they write it down, the chance of them internalizing this material goes up exponentially. Notebooking allows the freedom for students to write down the most interesting and meaningful facts they found in what they read. Third, notebooking engages both sides of the student's brain. The two key components we discussed earlier, that material and visual component, stimulate different parts of the brain which helps to solidify the information in the students' minds. As a result, I have seen that notebooking leads to greater retention of the material. So, now that we've chatted about what notebooking is, and I've shared with you three reasons why I love notebooking, you're probably wondering, how in the world do I get started with notebooking? Well, the first step is to read up on the concept itself. We've touched briefly on the two key components, but to really effectively teach notebooking, you need to understand the whys and hows behind it. I'll link to several articles in the show notes that will help you learn more about notebooking. Once you are familiar with notebooking, you can move on to the next step, which is to choose the resources from which the students are going to study. For this step, you need to decide what you want to study and then pick the resource that will present the information to your students. So something like a living book or an encyclopedia or a reference book. Whatever you choose, it needs to present the facts to the students in a way that they will understand. 
This way, they'll be able to pick out the key facts and remember something interesting from what they read. And the final step for getting started with notebooking is to actually create your first notebooking page. You can do this by reading the materials to your students or by having them read it on their own. After you've finished reading, don't forget to discuss what the students read. Once you're sure they understand the material, have the students write or dictate to you an age-appropriate narration. So that can range anywhere from a sentence to a couple of paragraphs. Then top it all off with a related image and voila, you have entered the wonderful world of notebooking. Well, I trust that you can see why I have fallen in love with notebooking and why we use it every week for teaching science. I encourage you to set aside some time this week to create a notebooking page with your students. Thank you for listening to episode 14 of the Tips for Homeschool Science show. You can see today's show notes by clicking on the link below or by heading over to elementalscience.com, finding tips and clicking on Tips for Homeschool Science show. Have a great week and enjoy some science.